What's going on, y'all? Oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've been live. Oh my gosh. Hello, hello, all of you all. Welcome, you guys, to today's broadcast. We are going to be rocking and rolling tonight with some stuff that I really hope just like inspires you, makes you just feel like you know what you're doing when you're stepping in the gym, starts up your week on the right foot. If you're watching this over the weekend and the replay or whenever, whenever you watch this, that you just come away with, mm, that's something, mm, that's something extra that's like, you know, I think I can take on the world. And it starts in the gym. Welcome to, day, to today's broadcast, you guys. Oh my gosh, we got people up in the room here already. We have Anita Mack, who's been saying hello since we've been starting here over, you know, in the holding room. What's going on? We got Facebook here. We got YouTube here. And I'm so happy to just kind of get things going and start it. You know, it's been kind of busy over here. And I never complain because to me, being busy is a good thing. If I'm not busy, then I'm likely somewhere depressed. I'm likely somewhere just like driving myself insane. Right? So we don't want to do that. But I've been busy and it's been good. And, you know, tonight's broadcast is just a re-kick off, like a kickoff again of my live channel, my live uh you know, my live shows and stuff. And the lives are really different than my pr my produced content. My produced content, very succinct, very to the point. You know how we do high production value and all that stuff. And we got the production value going over here, okay? But I like this to be a more laid back kind of conversation where I present something to you guys, some food for thought, we get into some Q&A, and then I read off some of your comments as well that I think would be helpful to answer that I see on the videos and all that good stuff. So we're just going to go ahead and make sure that, you know, if you are joining me for the first time right now, you got to go ahead and subscribe, baby. So subscribe to the channel. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right, subscribe. And then I want you to go ahead and make sure that you go click that bell notifications. Okay. And like the video as well. For those of you who don't know me, listen, my name is Roxy Beckles. Welcome to the broadcast. Who the hell is Roxy Beckles? Roxy, who is Roxy? Well, I am a coach. I'm an online coach. I am an IFBB pro. I'm an expert trainer. I've been in, the, in this industry for over 25, 26 years. It's been a long time. I know I look good, you know, but your girl's got some years on her, all right? And it's my passion to help all of you to just really re re rewrite your stories through fitness. And we talk about the four pillars of fitness here on the channel. That is your physical fitness, mental fitness, your emotional fitness, and your spiritual fitness. Guys, we are here to change lives. I am here to just inspire you to the next level. So look, if you haven't already, like I said, stop right now and subscribe to the channel. Subscribe, hit that bell notification, set it to all notifications so that way you do not miss a single video here okay and here's what i need you to do this is how the channel grows all right it's called engagement and what i'm gonna need you to do right now is do me one little favor look stop and go ahead and get this video a thumbs up give it a thumbs up right now all right i'm gonna i'm gonna stop talking for a minute because i just need you to go ahead and help me out thumbs up this video and that helps youtube to just spread this to all the ladies and gents out there who need to hear this stuff give some love and make sure that this message is getting out to every single person that needs it. Listen, if you guys want some further help, my Patreon is no longer, but I do have my inner circle. The link is down below, get workouts and all that stuff and more. And if you want to work with me, here is the link right here. We'll talk about this at the end of the video today. So guys, I want to go ahead and jump in, but the first thing that I kind of want to do, let me go ahead and cut this music a little bit. Okay. Say hello in the chat if you're here so I know you are, all right? Um, so the first thing I wanna do is wanna just make some announcements because things are a little different on the channel. For those of you that have been following me for the last like maybe two years or so, um, and for those of you who've been here a long time, some of y'all have been on my channel for like 10, 11 years, as long as I've been on YouTube. Others of you, maybe four or five years, whatever, maybe you're brand new, all right? But there, my, my channel has gone through a lot of evolutions over that time because I'm a human being and I'm evolving. And what I share is from my heart. You know, what I share with you guys is stuff that means something to me. These are lessons I've learned in life about fitness and more. And so with that comes change and growth. And you guys have grown with me in so many ways. And one of the things that you might notice, especially for those of you who've only been following me for like maybe the last year two or three or so 
is that I've been starting to do a lot more bodybuilding content again here on the channel. And, and to tell you the truth, just to get a little personal, you know, I've been sharing my story about bodybuilding and how I got into it. If you have not seen those videos in the replay, I will go ahead and put the playlist for my own personal contest prep from the time I started my first workout as an amateur all the way up to, you know, just me going on to the national level. There's some stuff for me turning pro and all that right here. I'll put it there for you. Go ahead and check that out. Um, bodybuilding has always been a part of what I do, you know, and there was a point where after I had completed at the Olympia, where I took a step back and I was like, look, I, I, I just, I'm not feeling this because I saw the division changing. I saw the sport changing. I saw the, the women getting bigger, more steroids, more drugs, more stuff like that. And I just, my femininity means everything to me. Looking like a bona fide woman in society's terms, yeah, that means something to me. And so I knew that in order for me to do what I needed to do for my division at the time, which was women's physique, I would need to resort to some things I didn't want to. So I took a step back from competing and I kind of shut the entire competition world out. Like I was that fed up. And the thing is though, that I never really left it fully because I have clients that compete. And you know, for me, I'm really big on helping women to be natural and do this as naturally as possible. All right. I have nothing against enhanced athletes, your choice, whatever, but I'm just about trying to do it as naturally as possible. So, I got the bug again though. And I shared with you guys about that in the video I'll post right over here. This is another video where I talked about me stepping back on stage, possibly in figure. So I'm still in the process of figuring that out. <laughs> when that's gonna happen, you guys just stay tuned, all right? But it inspired me. It inspired me to get back into the sport in a greater way, to really start paying attention to all of the shows and bringing it to you. I mean, I've always been watching them clients again that need to compete and prep. So my eyes have been on everything, but now I'm bringing more of that content here to the channel. And a lot of you have probably noticed that change. And if you are no one, you, if you're someone who's never thought about competing, bodybuilding isn't even something that you even like dreamt about. I don't want this content to steer, scare you away. Instead, what we're going to do is I'm still keeping my, my content that focuses on empowered femininity and womanhood, because I think that is just a holistic approach to fitness is looking at everything, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, right? We look at the four pillars, but there's lessons to be learned for so many of you who are coming to my channel and you are looking for ways to get stronger. You are looking for ways to build muscle. You are looking for ways to step outside of your comfort zone and you're fed up with this industry and these influencers out here telling you the same BS, the same BS story about what you need to be doing, which doesn't work, right? The squat challenges, the high rep training, the this, that, the third, you know, the, the diet tees, the, the, the weight, the waist trainers, the everything, the surgeries. It's just like, look, I know that you want someone to be raw and honest with you. And that's what I'm here for. And my platform has always been about that. I don't just work with competitors. You guys, I work with men too. To be honest, I got some men on the back end because I've been I've been working with men my whole life. But my greater audience is women. All right. And I work with women who don't even want to step on a stage, but they want to be stronger. They want to be more athletic. They want to feel like a woman in their bodies. They want to feel just mm, empowered and in their best shape physically. All right. So I wanted to make that announcement here that we will be focusing on all of that advanced training techniques and more. So buckle in, buckle in, especially if this stuff is important to you, especially if you know that you're putting the time and the effort in the gym and you just feel like there's more that you can be doing. Maybe you're just curious about like, you know, if I started to strength train in a certain way, or if I decided to do a show, what would that look like for me? What can my body look like, right? I don't care if you have a hundred pounds to lose. I'm gonna, I'm going to be doing an interview with a, with a client of mine in the next couple of weeks. We just hit the 100 pound weight loss threshold, guys, and she is about to switch focus after that. That was our first milestone, 100 pounds. Okay, I have her story here that I showed you guys when she had lost. I think we, we did 50 pounds and we did 70 pounds. All right. We're going to do that hundred pound weight loss celebration story. You guys watch out for that. But 
The next thing that she wants to do, you guys, compete. She wants to compete and do powerlifting. She's no different than so many of you out there, right? So I want you to be inspired. That was one of the big announcements that I had to make here. Make sure that you guys are on the same page about where the heck is this channel going, Roxy? Oh, honey, the fun is just beginning. Don't you go nowhere. Okay, I have one other announcement that I wanna get into before we talk about our main topic and before I get into the fit tip of the day. And that is this. If anything I'm saying right now inspires you, if you know that you are ready to make some changes, I want you to stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to tell you how you can go ahead and get into contact with me. But screw that, all right? At any point, look at the text scrolling above. Look below at the description of this video because I'm taking on new clients right now. And I want to talk to you if you are thinking about stepping on stage, let's do it the right way. Let's do it the healthy way. Let's do it the smart way. And for ladies out there who don't want to compete, but you know that it's time for you to hire someone to work with, Let's go, come and talk to me for free. Go ahead and book your appointment. See the Clarity Call link below. And it's scrolling up here above me, rockstarfitness.com slash Clarity Call. All right, enough of this intro, guys. You know what? It's time for me to go ahead and give you the fitness tip of the day. So let's get into this. All right, the fitness tip of the day is a segment where I'm just gonna plant something in you that was on my heart, that was in my mind, that maybe even fueled my workout. Maybe it was maybe it was something that somebody I was having a conversation with, and I was like, damn, that's good. Let me go ahead and share that with my audience. Okay. So that's what the fitness tip of the day is. And this is what I this is what I got for you. I want to feed your soul with this. Now listen here. This is this kind of ties into everything we're talking about today. And that and that's this thing. That bodybuilding, body building is for everyone, everyone. If you are in the gym, you are building the body. Therefore, your main job is to step outside of your comfort zone and to continually raise the bar and to ask yourself, how can I give more? Today's topic is about the mindset shift. I'm going to give you three mindset shifts that you need to have as a woman out there trying to really reach her best when it comes to this fitness stuff. I want to tell you the three mindset shifts that you have to have to be successful, not just give you tips about how to build muscle. We talk about that all the time, but it's deeper than that. But the first thing I want you to realize is that bodybuilding isn't just about competing again. It's not just about being a competitor. When you touch a weight, when you go in that weight room, when you decide that you're gonna use weight training and resistance training to change and reshape your body, you are a bodybuilder. And in that way, I want you to start approaching your workouts completely different. It's not just about showing up and trying to figure out what you're gonna do when you get there, all right? It's not just about showing up and just banging away reps mindlessly and doing all this stuff, no. You need to step up your game. You need to ask yourself, how can I raise the bar? You need to ask yourself, how can I give more? You need to look at your workouts, not just as something that you're doing just to look sexy or to do it for someone else to be more attractive. Listen, that's, that's, that's the benefit, honey, okay? Listen, this body, this body be turning the heads, I must say, even when it's out of shape, okay? This body just be turning. But that is, <laughs> y'all know I'm silly. That is just the, um, that's just the reward of the work. Your workouts should really fuel you on a deeper level. And that's why I want so many of you ladies to get into. You know, men, they, they hear this kind of talk when, when their magazines or their fitness personalities talk to them about fitness. Us, they give us the fluff and nutter stuff, I call it. You know, the fluffy weights and the, and the BS. And the, and the, listen, ladies, you are a bodybuilder the moment you decide that you're gonna use weight and resistance training to change your body. And it is up to you to step, to step outside of your comfort zone to make sure that you're putting everything that you got in your workouts in order to truly see your body change. And you already know from this channel, you're not gonna look like a man, honey, unless you were doing a stack of fantastic steroids, okay? Oh my God. 
or, you know, if you are like, that would be the only thing. There is no or. If you're doing a stack of fantastic steroids, you will turn into a man. If you're not, you won't. And excuse me, let me correct that. Even the biggest bodybuilders in the world, we talked about this before, you can never take a woman's wo femininity and womanhood from her. She was born a woman, right? She may not look the way that you want to look. That's fine. That's her choice. But you won't look like that because you're not doing what she does. So the fitness tip of the day is that, ladies, step it up. You too are a bodybuilder. Now, what I want to get into in our next segment is I want to go ahead and I want to talk about three major mindsets, three major shifts that you need to take right now if getting your body to where you want to be is your, is your utmost priority in this game. If building muscle is something that is on your mind, it's not just about showing up in that gym. That's only step one. But today I got three mindset shifts that I want you to keep front and center as you go on to this journey to changing your body. And then if we have any questions from the audience, we'll go ahead and take that. But I do want to finish off today's segment at uh, today's, uh, uh, what is this broadcast today's show? I want to finish off today's show with going ahead and answering four amazing comments from you guys in the audience that showed up on some of my videos, stuff that I was like, look, I can't just write this out. I got to answer it here. So we will be right back. All right. Quick message. Go ahead and make sure that you subscribe. I will come on back on the other side and start those four tips. Like what, like you're, what you're seeing here on my, here channel? my channel? Well, well this, is, this is just, just a, taste. a taste. I want to I invite, invite you, you, you to come, to come join, my join my exclusive, exclusive email, email list. list. Get even more tips and advice on training, nutrition, mindset, motivation, and empowering your femininity, all sent directly to your inbox. Stay inspired and be the first to access my newest articles, personal, personal blog, blog posts, podcasts, and videos. Don't let social media dictate when or if you get my stuff. Let's get directly connected and walk side by side on your journey to your best body and best life yet. Best of all, it's totally free. Head to rockstarfitness.com slash email list. See you soon. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into this. So we're going to go ahead and go into our burning issue. Today's burning issue. We are going to discuss the three most important mindset shifts that you've got to take right now, ladies, if building muscle is on your agenda. So let's go ahead and get into our first tip okay so here's our first tip for the day all right tip number one building muscle for women this is so important i want you guys to write these down if you have to tip number one i want you to just start with where you are i want you to listen to your body and i want you to focus more than anything on form and the mind muscle connection which are essential in the building process now here's the thing I've got a whole gamut of you here watching me. I got a whole bunch of you here, all walks of life. Some of you are seasoned athletes. Some of you are beginners. And I know how hard it is when you are someone who's just starting out trying to figure all this stuff out, right? And it can be so frustrating. And the number one thing that I want you to think about for those of you that are beginners particularly, or if you're someone who may have fallen off the wagon. You haven't been working out consistently. You know your body is in, isn't in the place where it used to be. Don't fret it. I need you to just simply start with where you are. I need you to simply give yourself grace. It's so easy, I think, when you're embarking on weight training, particularly with women, because the process of building muscle is a slow process. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Ooh, excuse me. It's easy to get discouraged along the way, right? And so just be where you are right now. Stay in the moment, ladies. For some of you, that may, that may mean lifting light. That may mean dropping your ego and hiring a, a trainer, hiring a coach, and working with someone who can give you the foundation that you need to really get to where you, you, you want to be in your mind's eye. The next thing that I wanted to point out there as well in the first tip is that it's crucial for you to not just go heavy for the sake of heavy. Now, 
I'm going to talk about lifting heavy in a moment, but before you can even increase the weights or do any of that stuff that you know that you have to do to change your body, you need to actually get that mind muscle connection going. Feeling your body move through the movement, feeling the weight, right? Because at the end of the day, it's mindset. It's how you think. That's what's going to really get all of this stuff to come, to come together. When I say that, what do I mean? Mindset and how you think. When I'm going through working out, I'm not just in the gym pumping arms and pumping, pumping. No, I'm moving with intention. I'm imagining every single muscle fiber. I'm imagining every single cell flexing, working, ripping, tearing, and then repairing. I'm paying attention to how my muscles are moving, how, what, how my form is looking, how's my posture, my abs and everything. Ladies, that can mean the difference between you see the results that you want to see or staying the same. It's that serious. So along the way, the most important thing that I want you to pay attention to is that mind muscle connection. And it is just going ahead, meeting yourself where you are, not getting frustrated, humbling yourself and truly working in the most intelligent way possible. Let's go on to tip number two, tip number two, realize that the results that you want will take time, consistency and effort. Never give up. It takes time, ladies. To build the body, to build muscle, it's not an overnight process. It's going to take time, consistency. It's going to take work. It's going to take you showing up. I see so many women along the way just get really discouraged because we've been conditioned to have this like microwave mindset in society. Like everything is instant. You want it? Boom, you got it. You know, and the body, it's, it's just not like that. This creature right here is, it has hundreds of thousands of years of evolution behind it and you will never outsmart your body. So the only way you're going to be able to build muscle and build strength is to be consistent. For so many of you, you're not training enough. You got to get in the gym more often, sometimes four to five days a week. Some of others of you are over training. Oh yeah, that's possible. You get so like wrapped up about your workouts. You're so motivated that you think that going every single day nonstop is what's going to get you the results that you need. And that's not true. Okay. What you need to do is listen. What you need to do is slow down. What you need to do is go ahead and make sure that you are recovering because you're not building a damn thing in the gym. You are breaking tissue down. Oh Lord. Repair happens when you are at rest. Repair happens on your off days. Repair happens when you're properly eating and fueling yourself. So listen to your bodies, ladies, and be smart about how you're doing this. Do not give up. Give in full full effort and stay consistent. Let's talk about the third tip for today. Tip number three in the mindset shift that I want you to go ahead and have when it comes to what's going to get you the results that you want from building muscle in the gym is this, it's plain and simple, lift heavy, lift heavy. But here's the thing, my dears, heavy is indeed a relative term. Now I know I I say this to you guys until the cows come home. I'm like, y'all got to lift heavy. Y'all got to push in the gym. Y'all got to really step it up. Y'all got to do this. Y'all got to do that. Heavy, 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 heavy. All right. But here's the truth. Heavy is a relative term. And when I say that, what I mean is that when you are working out, when you are in the gym, your goal is to, no matter what rep range you're in, it could be eight repetitions, 12 repetitions, it could be 20, 25 repetitions. By the time you get to that final set, the amount of weight that you use should make you get to failure by the end. Okay. And I always like to say controlled failure. So that's like one or two reps short of full failure, meaning full failure is when you are training, you get to that final rep and you can't, you can't finish it. Now I want you to get to be able to do at least one more rep. If you did one more or two more after that, you're done. That's control failure because we don't want to overtrain. So even if you're doing 15 repetitions, don't do the light baby weight at 15, do the amount of weight that you need to do to be able to do no more than 15 repetitions. 
If you're doing high rep training and you're doing 35 repetitions, same thing. Guys, I want you to leave the gym or your workouts, whether you're working out at home or at the gym, I want you to leave feeling like you left your guts on the floor, like you have nothing else to give. You have nothing else. You have given everything you got because it's that kind of training. It's that kind of mindset. It's that kind of asking yourself, how can I give more? How can I be better? How can I be stronger? It's when you're doing that, it's when you're training like that, that the body really does change. And again, it's going to take time. And these three mindset shifting tips that I'm leaving with you today, man, it's, it's so simple. It's crazy, right? It's so simple that it's crazy. You probably were expecting me to say something so grand that like, you know, you would have to like watch this video again, which you should, because it's really that damn good. Okay. I'm sitting here like, wow, this video is pretty motivating. I ready to go back for my workout again. Right? No, but like, I want you to realize it's, it's, it's science, but it's not rocket science, right? This is stuff that you can apply today, tomorrow. If reaching your goals actually means something to you, right? So those are our three tips for today, ladies. And I really hope if I got some guys out there, I really hope that this is inspiring you too, because listen, honey, this stuff is for everyone. Now we are going to go ahead and take a quick break. All right. And when we come back, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say hi to those in the chat that said hello to me. And then we're going to take a look at some comments that were left on my videos recently that I want to go ahead and tackle with y'all and give these folks an answer because these comments were definitely worth featuring for today. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to be right back. Let me go ahead and run this. I want you guys, if you are watching this right now, you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel right now. All right. Hit the bell notification, set all notifications, give this video a thumbs up and go ahead and return after this. What am I trying to say? I lost my train of thought. <laughs> go ahead and return after this. Hey there, what's going on? I want to thank you so much for your interest in my free ebook. If you are a woman who is over the age of 30, who is ready to just change her life and you feel like that you're at this point where a huge like transformation is right above the horizon for you and that transformation is not only going to include changing your body building your dream body but also changing your lifestyle changing your mindset and taking control of your fitness like never before honey you are going to love this ebook and i'm super excited to have you read it i wrote empowered feminine fitness for women just like you let me teach you exactly how you can take control of your training and your nutrition in a way that's balanced, that's not restrictive, that's not going to have you starving yourself to death or working out seven days a week till you are like blue in the face, honey. We're going to do this in a way that's going to help you to stay inspired, stay motivated. And most of all, how you can go ahead and incorporate the incredible, inspiring and amazing power of your innate feminine energy into your approach and not only that how when you do that it's going to help you to get really connected with your goals your reasons why and guarantee that you never fail again at this it's so much and i explain it all in the book so make sure that you go ahead you download it right now you read it cover to cover and i cannot wait to help you to open your mind to something completely new that i know you are going to love download your copy now and i will see you soon bye bye all right, that is for my ebook, you guys, Empowered Feminine Fitness. Make sure that you go ahead and you check that out. Uh, the link is down below to get your hands on that. And I also have a, um, I have a masterclass that goes with it as well. And it's all about just learning how to tap into those four pillars of fitness that we talked about, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual fitness, and making them work together to not only become stronger on the outside, but to be more empowered as a woman through your fitness journey. You know what I'm tired of, you guys? I'm tired of the narrative that, you know, the only reason why we work out is to be sexy or to feel younger. Listen, we talked about this on my channel, honey. Listen, I'm not ashamed to say I'm 42 years old. I'm turning 43 at the end of this month, okay? And exercise is the fountain of youth for me. And the thing that has really empowered me and made me a more confident woman over the years has been taking care of my body, but coming at a, at, at a, uh, at a point of view that this is about my lifestyle. This is about really like making sure that I stay healthy until I take my dying breath. 
And that's what Empowered Feminine Fitness kind of focuses up focuses on okay so it takes the fitness stuff in a deeper way and it's free so get that down below um let's go ahead and see i got a couple of folks i want to say hello to let me go ahead and bring up my thing over here let me bring up my thing over here hold on let me bring up my let's bring up the chat so, well, first of all when i'm out here let me get, let me get some background music while we out here okay because this is the break all right this is the break and let's go ahead and take a look at some of these chats because we got some folks out here saying hello to me. Who we got? We got Anita who said good evening, Roxy, earlier today. What's going on, Anita? We have Tay. Ashley, what's going on, Tay? It's good to see you here once again. Alejandra. Alejandra says hello from Panama. Honey, we are international out in these streets. What's going on, Alejandra? She says, Alejandra, she says hello from Panama. Great tips. Thank you. I just started to work on muscle mass at 42. Thank goodness I've been pretty active for most of my life. Honey, listen, I was just telling someone very close to me, I was saying, hey, look, it's never too late to work out, to get fit, to feel better, to move better. This is someone who's in their 80s that I care about, okay? And they were talking about, oh, the back hurts and this is happening and that. Listen, I don't care how old you are. If you are 22, 32, 42, 52, 62, 82, doesn't matter. It's never too late. Get out there and get moving, ladies. Now, now listen, some of the stuff you know you can't do, all right? You got injuries, you got this, that's fine. Hire a trainer, work with a coach, and have someone guide you through what you need to be doing no matter where you are. So Alejandra, thank you. Welcome from Panama. I'm so happy to have you here. We have Celine in the house. What's going on, Celine? She says, hi, Roxy, what's going on? She said she's late, don't worry, girl. You know you can go back and watch that replay. And um, she says that we work out to feel good and feel healthy, and I agree, absolutely. We have Jasmine, Jazzy J here in the house. What is up, girl? I'm late, sorry, you are an inspiration to me. So wonderful to find someone who looks like me in these spaces, Roxy, you are amazing boom thank you girl you know it means everything to me to be an example for not only all women all women of all races i don't care what you are honey okay wherever you was born whatever you look like whatever ethnicity you identify as okay don't matter but you know listen i talk about this here on my channel the overweight obesity rate in the black community is very high among both the men and the women. But as a woman, I gotta say, y'all know we are sitting around 80% combined obesity and overweight, two different weight, two different health categories. But when we break it down to the obesity, we are 56% obese. So if I am that representation for you to say, you look like me and she look like me and I got to do what I got to do. Come on, honey, get that health all the way together. Okay. That's what we's here for. All right. Anita says that she is 56. I love it. And Celine says she is 22. That's right. Listen, we got them all here. Okay. I see y'all. I see my demographics. Okay. I see y'all. So, all right, let's go ahead. And let's look at, I wanna go ahead for a second and let me turn this down here. And I wanna go ahead now and just switch back over to our next segment. Now this next segment is something that I'm trying out and I'm super excited about. Tay Ashley, she says she's 31, we got all ages here. So this is something I'm trying out guys that I'm, I'm, I, I, I like. This is where we're gonna go ahead and take a look at your comments. Now what I'm hoping is that I encourage y'all to get in here, watch my videos, make your comments, make them good, okay? You can even say stuff that's controversial because, honey, I will go ahead and feature it here and answer it, okay? Don't be getting fresh, though, okay? Because I don't have a problem blocking none of y'all, okay? I will block you in a minute if you say something crazy to me, you say something crazy to somebody else, and I'm just like, well, you crossing lines here, you will be muted, okay? So just keep that in mind, keep it civil, we ain't got to agree, just keep it civil. You know what I'm saying? Keep it civil, we all get. So let's go ahead and get, I'm so silly. This is why the live is good, because you guys get to see a little bit more of my crazy personality. Because I be like all button up in my, in my produced videos. I'm like, hi guys, my name is Roxy. Yeah, I'm just like so like to the letter and so professional. And here I'm just like wiling out. Like this is you and me, like having a conversation in my living room. This is not really my living room, but whatever, you get it, okay? so. Yeah, come on, make sure you don't you don't miss these videos here, okay? Get get the notifications, y'all. All right, let's go ahead into it. Let's go ahead into it. So our first 
comment today comes from Heather P. Okay. And this one was on a recent video where I talked about the USA's and the women who recently turned pro at the USA championships here. Uh, well, not here, but in Las Vegas, um, just a few weeks ago. And here's what she had to say. And I thought this was interesting, which is why I wanted to address it here. So Heather P says, when I did, when I did a national level MPC show in 2019, many of the ladies there won pro cards in multiple divisions, which I found extremely frustrating. That was the tipping point for me to go to OCB where you can't cross classes in the same show. If the judges are truly following the guidelines for each division, the same woman shouldn't win both figure and physique or physique and bodybuilding. Now, I can understand it at, at the amateur level when you're still relatively new to the sport and trying to find out where your interest and your body type fit in best. But I feel that once you reach the national level, you shouldn't cross divisions at the same show. Just my two cents. I really love these, these videos, these review videos you're doing of the shows. It helps to clear, it, it helps to hear a coach's perspective on the winners and how the competitors played out. Thank you so much for that one, Heather. And I think that that was a great comment and I, and I wanted to address it because I know that so many of you probably have that question. So in that video, um, I had talked about the winner of the bodybuilding division who won her IFBB pro card and then who crossed over and did women's physique, won the pro card there and the overall. So she took the overall in both bodybuilding and she took the overall in women's physique, getting pro cards in both. So that means that someone actually in bodybuilding did not earn their pro card because she won hers and she won it in physique as well. She, if she didn't do both position, uh, uh, divisions, someone else might've won that physique card, right? So I know how frustrating that can be. And, and as a competitor, personally, I, I feel the same way, Heather. I don't think that you're wrong in that. I think that the rules are that if you choose one division, you show up in that division and that's what you, sh should be competing in. Now, obviously I'm not sure when that became so laxed on the national level in the IFBB NPC. I always thought, I, I, I guess I didn't, I never really paid much attention to it as I was coming up, even though that happened as a rarity where someone would get into two divisions and win their pro cards and stuff like that. It happens more often on the local level, which is, you know, which is fine, like you said. But it is, it's, it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating. And here's how I can explain at least what happened with this particular show. And I think that if there were more competitors or, or if the bodybuilding division at the USA's this year was more competitive than it was, I don't think she would have won that pro card. I really don't. I think that she looked great for women's physique and she has the size, she has the shape for women's physique. She did not bring the conditioning that was needed for a actual, like the pro bodybuilder level. She does not have the conditioning that those girls have at the pro IFBB level, right? And the truth is, is that a lot of times competitors, once you turn pro on the national level, you've got work to do because you're going into a deeper pond of like some of the top athletes in the world, right? So development has to happen. But if you looked at the bodybuilding division this year, there are only a few competitors. I think there were three competitors in the light heavyweight, and then there was heavyweight, there's only two competitors. And most of them were not in shape. They just, for bodybuilding, they were not in shape. I mean, the girls turned around to the back and you can see that they had body fat on their glutes. Like they were, some girls looked like they could have been like another six weeks out or so if you want to ask me as a coach, right? Um, so I was just about to say, I, I, I would not have put them out there. Some of those ladies, I would not have put them out there for that show um, looking the way that they did. I would say, listen, you need to pick another show, you know, because I, I always like to bring, I know what it's like to step on stage and look horrible. I had a show where I look, there's some pictures out there of me, honey, I ain't never going to tell you where to find them. I ain't going to tell you what show it was. I looked a hot mess, okay? My body was just done, okay? 
And it happens, right? But it's the coach's responsibility not to put you out there like that. So the competitors that showed up for bodybuilding, you know, she was the best one out of all of them. Now, when it came to physique, I thought that she actually did really well. She has a great shape. And again, the conditioning of the glutes needed to be really a lot tighter for her to really dominate in that division. But she has all of the markings to be a physique competitor and to be a top physique competitor. I actually really look forward to seeing what she looks like out there um, as she makes her pro debut. But you're right, you know, and those are that that's it happens sometimes. Now, I think it, it doesn't happen as much, I think, when you're talking about, let's say, the cross between bikini to, to wellness to figure. You don't see it that much. And you, I don't think you really see that much of the jump between figure and women's physique or anyone that would win a pro card in any of those four at the national level, right? There is actually a huge delineation when you really start looking at these competitors. But because with bodybuilding, there aren't a lot of competitors showing up for bodybuilding. And sometimes there's not a lot of competitors showing up for women's physique either. So they have to choose out of who's there. And if they're going to judge fairly, not just, okay, you won this game, we have to just give it to the next person. And they're gonna do it fairly. Sometimes that happens. So I know it's frustrating, but that's kind of the explanation with that. I hope that that was helpful and thank you for your comment. Let's go on to the next one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. So. This one appeared on the video that I did uh, that was a reaction video to the Miami Muscle talking about this competitor who claims to be 100% natural and we found out she's actually on a stack of fantastic drugs that are close enough to steroids that they might as well be steroids. Okay, all right. So <laughs> we got this comment from 87FG who said technically no one is natural supplements are not performance enhancing but are still causing a change in the body if some once if someone wants to be generally natural they would just diet and lift and i thought this was a great one great 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 comment and i wanted to address that because i think at one point i felt like that and then I kind of really started to study the human body. Now, it depends on the kind of supplements we're talking about. And I, and I agree to, with you to a certain degree, right? Because there's all kinds of supplements. Now, what kind of supplements are you talking about? Are you talking about fat burners? Are you talking about pre-workouts? Are you talking about creatine, right? Or what are you talking about really is what, what it comes down to, to say that if you're taking these things, you're not natural. So I think that when you, if you wanna make that, that statement, I would say if you're gonna include yes, Fat burners, sure. Uh, if you want to say like pre-workouts, depending on what's in the pre-workout, sure, you know. But I don't know if that really stands. Like, because when you say supplements, are you talking about vitamins as well? Are you talking about like, you know, things like that? Because those also have an enhancement in the body. But the thing is, is that when you're a super active person, when you're an athlete, when you're someone who works out all the time, your body is being depleted so much, right? That a lot of what you need to be able to perform, to grow and to max out your lifts and to be able to build muscle, you need more than, than the average person does. So if you just eat and lift and that's it, you probably are not gonna cover all your bases with all of the nutrients that you're simply depleting, draining your body of on a daily basis. So vitamins, iron, you know, stuff like that, minerals, fish oils, all of those kinds of things, those are needed for proper development. Otherwise, you're just gonna be tearing your body down and you're gonna start getting to a point where you're gonna stall out because you're not feeding your body properly. Now, I do draw my line at fat burners, but no, I draw my line at fat burners, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a tricky thing. Like, you know, if you take a fat burner, are you natural? Well, yeah, you're still natural, but you just say, hey, listen, I'm on a fat burner, unless it's clenbuterol, okay? Then you're, you're on a stack. You are on a stack of fantastic steroids. That's what we're gonna call it, okay? <laughs> Don't ask me about clen. We'll do a video on clen. I'll put it in my member section, okay? Because I know some of y'all have people out there telling you to take this stuff, and I got to break it down like, no, listen, honey. Here is what it does in the body. Here's the effects. So before you take it, make sure you know what you're doing. All right, we'll talk about that on the member section. Join the members, join now, click that button, honey, because that's where the juicy stuff's gonna be, all right? 
So, uh, you know, if you're if you're taking supplements, you're not natural. That's it's a fair argument, but you know, it depends on how you quantify it. Okay. Good question though. Good one. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next comment we have here. Same video, same video. You guys got to watch that video. I'm going to ding it here in the, in the, um, little circle. I thing, so you can go watch that, click the link to watch that. And I'll put it down below as well. And they said, same video talking about the natural competitor, quote unquote, natural from black Socrates, black Socrates says the dishonesty in the fitness industry is really shameful. You can develop a really good body with hard work and dedication, but it takes time. When people promote unrealistic expectations, I believe it does more harm than good. Bodybuilding has become one of the most dangerous sports when it should be about health. And Black Socrates, I thought this was a fantastic comment and I just had to come on here to give you your props and to give it the dignity of answering it verbally versus just, you know, texting it and, and writing it out on in the comments. And I, I gotta agree with you. You know, I got into bodybuilding because I love the body. I love, I was a dancer and I love motion. I love, I love movement, you know, and I love fitness. I love having the power to sculpt my body and to change it, to get in the gym, to do all that stuff. It's fantastic. It feels good. Those of you who work out, you know, you know, and when I got into the sport, I think that was, that was a shocking like wake up moment for me because no one talks about the drug side of the sport. No one talks about what they're really taking. I mean, they'll tell you their protein powder. They'll tell you what vitamins they're tell taking. They might even tell you about the over-the-counter fat burner that they're taking when they're really taking Glen at all. Okay. And you can't get Glen over the table. Okay. Uh, you can't get it, you know, just you, you have to get it underground, right? They won't tell you that. And they will promote this image as though they are training and dieting and just doing that and nothing else. And so many of you don't realize how much drugs, whether they are legal or illegal. And when I say legal, I'm talking about pro hormones. Some of them are legal. Some of them are not. We talked about that in the video. I'm talking about, uh, research peptides. You know, you can easily take research peptides and those are not illegal, but they have the same kind of effects as the body does when it comes to taking anabolic steroids. That's what we saw in that competitor who was featured in the video, right? And yes, competitors, fitness influencers, pros, athletes, they're not disclosing this stuff. And a lot of it is because they can't, you know, you can't sit on the, on the internet and, you know, I guess criminalize yourself and say, yeah, I'm taking a stack of fantastic steroids and this is what I'm taking. I mean, do you want, do you want the feds or somebody to raid your house? Right. I mean, I don't know what would happen. Right. And so, and, and I guess like it's, it's risky business. It's really risky. It's taboo. So people can't talk about it. We've had so many bodybuilders die in the last two years. So many bodybuilders have died. Some of them died at shows or in the middle of prep and, and stuff like that. Others have died because of sickness and illness, maybe or may not, maybe or maybe not related to, you know, what they may be taking and, and all that other stuff, you know? So bodybuilding is dangerous, you guys. That is why it's so important for you to have a proper coach to take you through this process, to help you to know what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, you know? And one of the things I'll especially say to my ladies is that, you know, some of you do work with male competition prep coaches, or you have a boyfriend, a husband, or someone, you know, close to you, friends who might suggest for you to take certain things, you know, and you have to be careful and make sure that you do your research because there's no such thing as a drug without side effects. None, you know, you're going to sacrifice something. And a lot of times, depending on what you're taking, it will be your feminine characteristics. You know, so be careful, be careful out there, guys. Great comment, great comment. I think we have one more before we wrap things up. Let me see. Oh yes, we do. Now this comment appeared on the video where I talked about creating an hourglass physique. And I was telling you guys how it's possible to do that, whether you are trying to compete or not, it's the same training principles. 
And one of the things I said in that video is that you should stop doing too much work on the obliques if you think that's gonna give you a tiny waist because it won't. And we got a great comment from Burn That Butter. Burn That Butter says, OMG, I thought doing work for obliques would bring in my waist. I am so boxy and have been my whole life. Working on losing the last 20 to 30 pounds. I've lost 87 pounds so far. Congratulations, girl, that's fantastic. And I'm starting to see those hints of abs, but can really see my obliques. If I can tighten up the flab and loose skin, I just might have the nerve to get on stage, maybe. <laughs> it's a dream, but I'm working hard. Thanks, Roxy. I will redirect my midsection training routine and see how it goes. Absolutely. Burn that butt butter. Thank you so much for your comment. Surprising, right guys? Surprising. That's kind of an old bodybuilding um, trick as well. Like as far as not even a trick, but it's just like uh, when you talk about pro program design protocols, your abdominals are just like any other muscle. You know, it wants to build, it wants to grow. And if you're not paying attention, one of the things that can thicken your waist is if you're doing a lot of that. I see women in the gym all the time doing those side bends with the weights and you know a lot of twisting motions, trying to get their abdominals tight, trying to make their waist smaller. And what that can actually do is build the abdominal muscles, thicken those walls. So for competitors particularly, that's gonna mess with your, with your shape, right? Now, I don't mind doing them every so often. I, I usually will put some oblique work into clients programming here and there. We don't even really directly train the abs in my, progr my approach to, to, to programming, all right? And that is because we do a lot of functional training. We use all kinds of modalities, cables, bands, medicine balls, you know, body weight, twisting through space and running, jumping, throwing. We do so many functional motion patterns that the core is already engaged when my clients are training. So we don't have to necessarily rely on doing any heavy work for the abs. Now, sometimes I will put that in for, for my clients who do have like weaker stomach muscles. I like to see a bit of a six pack when I see my clients take their front poses, especially for my women's physique clients. When you go into your abdominal front thigh, we gotta be able to see those abs. So for some of my clients, I do have them training in specific ways to build up and create a little bit of hypertrophy, but we don't overdo it. You know, we don't overdo it. And so if you're someone who has a boxier waist, you want to be careful that you're not making it worse by doing all that twisting, bending and stuff like that with weights, particularly that's just going to make it thicker. All right. So think about the things that will stabilize you. You want to do more like uh, planks. You want to do, you know, uh, cable work, medicine balls and stuff like that. Mix it up in that way. And I think that's going to really help you out. I think that's going to be um, a lot more fruitful. All right, guys, that's the last tip that I have for today, but I, I'm going to go ahead. I want to say this. If you're enjoying this right now, go ahead and post your comments below. Let's hear what you have to say. I got a couple of comments that came in here. I want to see if we can bring some stuff up before I head out of here. And we have Irvin Palacio who's coming in from Facebook. He said, I once observed a woman kind of lopsided. When I asked what she does for a living, it turns out she was a baby nurse. It made sense that her obliques were overdeveloped on one side as a result. So yeah, careful with the obliques. Great one, Irvin. Guys, let me tell you something. Repeated motion patterns and things that you do in daily life, they develop the body as well. If you ever heard of something called like, um, you can get injuries, they're called like, like chronic injuries that are from motion. Like, so if you're someone who's on their feet all day and you have a really hard job where you're doing the same thing, let's say you're taking boxes and you're putting something from here to over here and you're always going the same motion, that can create some chronic injury over time. So be very careful with yourselves and watch your body. If you start to see your bodies are leaning or doing anything weird, get in the gym and start working that other side to bring you back into balance. Pay close attention to how you're feeling. All right, we have Jasmine Jazzy J who has a really great comment here. Let me see if I can go ahead and bring it up on the screen. Facebook, I can't typically bring yours up on the screen, but uh, I can do it for for uh, YouTube. So here we go. Let's see, Jazzy, 
says, I have a controversial question. If you don't want to answer it, no worries. I'm wondering what are your thoughts in trans women competing in bodybuilding in the women's division? Do you think it's fair? You know, I am not aware of that happening right now as it stands um, to a large degree to whereas like people are talking about it. I know that there was a trans athlete a couple of years ago who did compete and I think that she won her pro card in physique or bodybuilding or something like that. And you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because within the sport of bodybuilding, you have women who are openly, well, who are obviously enhanced with male hormones, right? Some harsh stuff. Some women are taking testosterone, they're taking DECA, they're taking Prima and they're taking these really hard drugs that ramp up your testosterone, that ramp up your androgens in your body and they start developing male characteristics. That's why you see some women, I have a video review coming up in a, you know, in one of our next um, uh, videos that I have planned where a competitor openly admits to taking steroids to build her body. And you're gonna notice the change in her voice. Her voice is very deep. These are the things that happen when women are exposed to exogenous drugs that are male hormones. They really start to change your, sex hormones and it starts to change your characteristics physically right to that closer of male so if we have someone who is a trans woman you know even if she's gone through the changes and she takes estrogen and all that other stuff she still has the effects of testosterone through her system as she developed muscle when she was working out and stuff like that she might be on par with some of the women she's standing next to because they've manipulated their bodies in the same way so i think it's an interesting thing now that is not to say i have some very strong opinions about trans women in sports okay and when i say sports i mean performance sports as far as is there a difference between you know, naturally born women versus trans women. Do trans women have the advantage in sports? And I think yes, and I don't think that's fair. But bodybuilding as a sport is completely different, you know, and it's not performance based, it's aesthetic. And you've got some women who are pumped up on some steroids that make them have some really amazing aesthetics that they wouldn't have if they weren't pumped up on steroids. So if they stand next to someone who has a great shape and physique, and they're just someone who's trans, is it really a difference? That's a great question. That's a fantastic question. That's something that I am sure, I am sure the justices are gonna come up against. So it'll be really interesting to see what they do with that, you know, and, and I can't quite tell you, cause child, I don't know, <laughs> okay? I don't know, Jazzy J, that was a good, good question. Guys, let's go ahead and wrap things up here. Thank you so much for joining me. If you want to work with me, come to my website, rockstarfitness.com. More specifically, rockstarfitness.com slash clarity call, okay? And you can set up a 20 minute call for us to talk about what your goals are. What is it that you wanna achieve? How can we change your body? What's keeping you up at night? What's making you stuck? I wanna get you unstuck. I want to give you a solution. Now, I am currently taking on new clients, okay? I got a bunch of openings that are starting up in September, and I want to work with those who are looking to step on stage, whether it's for the first time or the hundredth time, but you want to do better. Come on and talk to your girl, Rox. Come on over to my website. The link is down below in the description of this video. Let's get this body together. Let's take you to the next level. And if you're someone who wants to go ahead and you want to have some, some help, Maybe you're not ready for coaching yet. Maybe you want to work out on your own, but you'd love to get workouts sent to you. You want to learn how to create diets and all that stuff. My inner circle program is a membership program. It's perfect for you. I closed my Patreon, you guys. So I'm not doing the Patreon anymore. We have the inner circle on my website and it's jam packed. Okay, it, honey, it is crazy. So come on over to rockstarfitness.com slash inner circle. Link is down below. Get yourself signed up. You can get started for $7. Just an introductory, poke around a little bit, and then you'll get charged for the full rate afterwards. So come on by, check that out, and see if you like it. All right, if you're watching this on the replay, honey, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna put some videos right over here. Come on over here, watch this next video, and I'll see you over there. <laughs>